that communists and Islamists have a worldwide alliance which truly is free of physical borders is a fact known to all. What is not generally known, however, is that while there are glaring similarities between the ideologies of Islamists and neo-communists, once either one of them gains power, the other's life is simply put to an end. The Chinese Communist Party is no exception. While the CCP holds a particular sense of hatred and disgust for Uyghur Muslims and Islam in general, it has absolutely no qualms in adopting the ways and means of jihadis. The CCP's disregard for freedom and liberties, not to mention democracy, serves as a testimony to the above assertions. Beijing has shoved down the throats of Hong Kongers the draconian national security law, and ever since the enforcement of the same in the erstwhile autonomous city, pro-democracy books, authored by liberty enthusiasts, are mysteriously disappearing from its libraries. Among the books that seem to have disappeared from the shelves of libraries are Joshua Wong's writings. Wong is one of the city's most notable activists and has taken active part in the Hong Kong protests since 2019. Another author whose writings seem to have disappeared is Tanya Chan, a famous pro-democracy lawyer. Close to 400 people have already been arrested by CCP's minions in Hong Kong on frivolous charges, of course. The writings of such people on expected lines seem to have caught the attention of desperate CCP authorities who are doing everything in their power to quell pro-democracy sentiments in Hong Kong. Books which can inspire a multitude of people to seek independence and freedom from a tyrannical Chinese regime are better off away from public eye rather than openly available for its consumption. Further, the writings of such individuals can serve as a threat to the CCP regime, not just in Hong Kong, but across mainland China if their content was somehow to be amplified. One is almost instantly reminded of how the Islamic State back in 2015 burnt the central libraries of Mosul, located in the two campuses of Mosul University. Treasure-like manuscripts, books, ancient writings presumably describing the region's erstwhile pagan culture were burnt down by ISIL. The disheartening burning of over 100,000 books and writings by Islamists and Salafi terrorists had back then shocked the world. Additionally, statues, portraits and other prized artifacts were destroyed using sledgehammers by the Islamic State terrorists, citing their nearness to polytheism. In 2001, when the Taliban made a grand spectacle by blowing up the two magnificent Bamiyan Buddhas in Afghanistan, the modern world for the first time perhaps witnessed the absolute hatred which Islamists harboured in their hearts for cultural diversity and pluralism. Historically, such people have plundered various regions as a part of their conquests and destroyed prized possessions of what used to be, back in the day, unique civilizations. India, having suffered Islamic invasions like no other country, stands as an example of what religious and ideological supremacy of a few can do to an entire civilization. Today, the CCP is employing similar methods. They are destroying and corrupting houses of knowledge and purging Hong Kong's libraries. What they are doing to Uyghur Muslims needs no explanation. From organ harvesting to forced labour to forced relations with Uyghur women, communists in China are striving to achieve an absolute homogeneity of thought and identity. Both the CCP and the Islamic State are disgusted by notions of freedom of speech and expression and do whatever necessary to curb the same. The rule of both communists as well as Islamists is premised upon the extent to which they can subjugate people under them. Neither of the two is shy of killing people in order to protect their regime and both are infamous for employing all means necessary, even if in blatant violation of basic human rights, to sustain their rule. According to the national security law, the convicts will not be able to contest any elections in Hong Kong and since those who will be arrested under the law would be pro-democracy protesters, the CCP is overtly killing all dissent and solidifying its own rule upon Hong Kong by exterminating all opposition. If ever your freedoms or liberties are taken away, the perpetrators will either be Islamists or communists, or it can be a coalition of both.